Hi, my name is David Danello, and I'm the author of the Field Researcher's Handbook. And to tell you a little bit about why I wrote the book, I'd like to tell you about who I dedicated it to. I dedicated it to two young men I met when I was traveling through Iraqi Kurdistan, who are Iranian Kurds. One wanted to be a mountaineer, the other a rider. I met them traveling on a shared taxi when the one who wanted to be a rider was literally reading Lolita in the back seat in Iraqi Kurdistan. The aspiring mountaineer was a former Iranian soldier. He'd been drafted in the Iranian army for two years. And as we bonded over our conversations about nature, about the outdoors, about mountaineering, and about our military life, I realized that I had as much in common with this young man, or perhaps even more, than I did with many of the Marines whom I had served with in Iraq. These two gentlemen spoke five languages and were some of the most cultured people I'd ever met in my life. Yet at the same time, in the United States, if you could think of any group or any demographic that would be seen as most demonized, it might be the former Iranian soldier. And in an era that so often demonizes the other, I see field research as not only a necessary act of policy investigation, but also as a positive act of political rebellion to understand the world that we live in in a much deeper way. I'd like to tell you a little bit about why you should buy the book and who you might be if you're interested in it. Whether you're a grad student, a graduate student, a government employee, a government contractor, or perhaps a multinational corporation marketing specialist, in many ways you're field researching every day. We talk a lot about big data in the world of qualitative research, as well as quantitative research, but big data has in many ways lost its meaning. We know how to collect information. What field research does is it provides us with a context on how to use it. Most textbooks focus a great deal on the theory and the background academically that's rooted in why you go about doing what you do as a qualitative researcher. This book is not about the theory, it's about the practice. The Field Researcher's Handbook is about how to do field research and is grounded in practical experience of over 15 years of field research. The Field Researcher's Handbook really talks about before, during, and after the process of, of field research. So before you even get into the field, you want to think a little bit about how you're coming into the field, what your own positionality is, what your own background is, how you will be interacting with the people that you meet with in another country, in another culture, in another space, in another way of life. During your field research, while you're in the field, you want to feel comfortable. So you want to be able to be moving outside of your comfort zone, but with a sense of confidence that you've pre prepared adequately with your logistics, that you've established a growing network, that you have a sense of how you're going to conduct an interview, that you have a sense of the types of things that you're looking for, and that you feel comfortable and safe in the situations that you're entering that you have some awareness. After you come back from the field, you want to be able to know that you can present your research confidently, whether that's in a presentation, in a lecture, in a talk, or in a written product. And you want to have a sense of how you're going to take that material and give it to your your client or your employer or your professor. And all of those are experiences that I've had over the past 15 years, which frames the structure of the book. In Chapter 3 of the Field Researcher's Handbook, I discuss situational awareness, which is a different attribute than many qualitative researchers learn formally in terms of the process of field research preparation. The reason why I spend some time discussing this in the book and what is an illustration of how this book is different than other books on the topic is because most people are nervous when they go into the field, particularly people who come from the United States and who may have had less of an opportunity to experience other cultures when they're growing up or when they're traveling. 
And so it's natural to feel some sense of uncertainty or fear, but it's important to not let that fear control you. I talk through three major categories that you can observe and that you can interact with in terms of maintaining awareness of your situation. I talk through kinesics and biometric cues, which is basically body language, and how you watch people and then how you interact with people in terms of the gestures that they use with their hands, with their head, with their feet, and other parts of their bodies. I talk through proxemics and geographics, which is how people use space and how you can observe what's happening in the space just by watching where people go, where they feel comfortable, how they collect in groups, what types of access permissions people have to different space, and activities of that sort. And finally, I talk through iconography and atmospherics, which is essentially learning from your surroundings. It's being observant of the types of flags that are being flown, the types of clothing people are wearing, the types of graffiti that may be in an area, or the types of symbology that are posted around, and then just the overall feel of a place and how people appear to be acting in normal circumstances. These are essentially common sense, but what this book provides is some terminology and a structure to make sense of that common sense, which is what gives many people a greater sense of confidence when they go into the field.